the Yolink Temperature Humidity Sensor 2 Pack with Hub. Here's the Hub. Looks like it's got Ethernet and a micro USB connection along with a set button. Here's the label here, model YS1603-UC, 5 volts DC 1 amp. Here's the manual. Interesting. Comes with the Ethernet cable along with the micro USB cable. And it looks like we have an AC adapter for that USB cable, the micro USB cable. Here are the temperature sensors. Here's one. Looks like it's got a display and the ability to be mounted on the back. Looks like there's a set button right here on the back. So now I'm going to go ahead and read the instructions and get this set up. The very first step is to go into the App Store on your phone and type in Yolink. And that's going to bring up the app. Then you go ahead and hit install. Open. Allow. And I'm going to go ahead and set up an account. So I created my account and now it's stating that I have to scan the QR code to add the device to my account. Here you get to add the name and the room. That's fine, I'm going to leave it that. You'll link hub, room, we'll add a room. I'll name it office because that's where it'll be. Done. Hit the check mark. Bind a device. Yolink Hub has been bound. I have successfully added the product. Device is offline. And so now I'm going to have to get this connected to power and Ethernet because they recommend in the manual Ethernet over wireless. Here is my modem and my router. The modem is right here. That provides internet to the network. And this is the router that routes all of that internet to the devices on my network. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be plugging in this micro USB cable into the AC adapter and then plugging this AC adapter into a power source. So right now, the power button is flashing on the Yolink because we now have power to the hub. And you'll also notice that it is flashing orange for the network. It does it periodically. And so that being said, I'm going to take this Ethernet cable that was provided with the unit and I'm going to plug it into my router. Some of you might have a modem and router built into one device. So if that's the case, all you have to do is take this Ethernet cable and plug it into that. So now we have both the power and the Ethernet plugged into the Yolink Cub. I'm going to go back to the app on my phone. As you can see here, Yolink Hub is showing online. The next thing it wants you to do, because we have to set up these sensors right here, is we have to hit this minus sign here and it wants us to scan the code on the back and then press the set button right here on the back now I can see the uh, light blink and there we go look it's showing the uh, temperature that's pretty cool so then we can get to name it and we'll name this one refrigerator and we'll set it to office which is my room technically my refrigerator is in the kitchen and my freezer chest is in the basement but the hub itself is in the office that's why I did that so then we click bind device you have successfully added this product this device is online done 
That is pretty cool. Look, now it shows the refrigerator. And we're going to set up the other one for the deep freezer. Same process. Hit the negative sign. Scan the QR code on the back. We're going to name it Freezer. We'll set it to Office Hub. I might just rename that hub. And we have to hit Set Bind Device. Freezer chest has been bound by myself. Done. There we go. Now it's time for me to put them in the refrigerator and the freezer chest. Now the only negative so far is there's no mounting gear for this. So I'm just going to put these in the freezer and refrigerator for now and we'll take it from there. Here's my refrigerator. It's the freezer section and I'm just going to place it in the door here out of the way. And this is my freezer chest. I'm just going to place it in here. And now you can see that the refrigerator already started dropping in temperature. Check that out. Shows you a little graph. Now this is pretty cool. So if we go back and we take a look at the refrigerator, you'll see it's in red. It's alerting me that the temperature is dropping. So if I go back and I go in here, right here, you can actually calibrate the alert right here. So I'm going to have to figure out what temperature range the freezer operates at because the freezer will cool down obviously to a certain set point and then the uh, temperature is going to come up a little bit to conserve the condenser and energy so it'll come back up and then go back down. It'll, it'll start to, to reduce the temperature again and the condenser will kick back on. So I just need to find out the range at which the freezer fluctuates at. Same thing with the refrigerator. And then I'm just going to alter this temperature range here so that if it goes outside of the normal range, it will alert me. That is pretty cool. So it just dawned on me that these probably have batteries in them. Otherwise, how are they going to be powered? And I just recently learned that I really want to stay away from alkaline batteries because not only do they leak, they're more sensitive to temperature fluctuation. And what am I doing? I'm putting them in a refrigerator and a freezer chest. So I'm going to open this up and I want to find out if it's alkaline or lithium. I have a feeling it's going to be alkaline. If that's the case, I'm going to be replacing those. And uh, we will be testing these out thoroughly to see how well the lithium batteries hold up to the test of time. because. It's not even going to be worth my time to even test with these alkalines. Yeah, they're alkalines. They're alkaline batteries. I'm going to get them swapped out with these. These are Energizer Lithium AAA batteries. So they're going to stand up better to the temperature fluctuations and extreme cold.